Hello, welcome to episode 67 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, a thousand more movies you must see before you die. <sighs> yeah. We're going to be doing a bit of a surrealist double bill here. The next video will be um, from the same director, a same, you know, similar kind of film. Uh, we're kicking off with a silent short called uh, Unchien Andalou, an Andalusian dog. Directed by Louis Bunuel. A Spanish filmmaker who worked in France uh, at the time in the late 20s and early 30s. And it was also uh, kind of joint made with Salvador Dali, a famous surrealist um, painter, artist. Uh, if you've seen the, the Melting Clocks, you know, he, but he's behind that. So these two guys got together to make this short film. It's only about 15, 16 minutes long. And uh, it's, I guess, the idea of it is to kind of capture. Um, the unpredictability of dreams and, and, and just random imagery. Now, I'm going to do something I don't normally do, but I want to give you a little bit of context here as to what other people think of this film. And I'm going to paraphrase Christopher Lloyd in The Page Master and say, Look to the book! I'm going to read from the book um, what it has to say about Unshen and Delu. The directorial debut of Louis Bunuel, collaborating with artist Salvador Dali, is etched into our consciousness of film history because of one image above all, a razor slicing open an eyeball. What is this? Shock tactic? Symbol of a modernist vision? Male aggression toward woman? For Jean Vigo, who hailed an Andalusian dog for its social consciousness, Bunuel's associative montage raised a philosophical query. Is it more dreadful than the spectacle of a cloud veiling a full moon? One thing is certain, the image kicks off a classic surrealist parable of Eros, ever denied, ever frustrated by institutions and mores. Too often because its heavy influence on rock video, an Andalusian dog has been reduced to and recycled as a collection of disconnected, striking, incongruous images, dead horse on a piano, ants in a hand, but this overlooks what gives the work its cohering force. The fact that in many ways Bunuel scrupulously respects certain conventions of classical continuity and linkage, creating a certain disquieting narrative sense among those fragments from the unconscious. This is a dialectic of surface rationality versus deep churning forces that the id, from the id that Bunuel would continue exploring to the very end of his career. What a load of absolute horseshit! Um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't flow with me. It really doesn't. All this, all these big words and analysing it as something more, you know. Uh, I don't discredit anyone uh, or have anything against anyone who enjoys this film, who enjoys this kind of film and find something in it. You know, we all have the different things that we bring to it. That's the thing, when we watch a film, we're projecting our own self onto it because what we get out of a film is what we bring to it and how we receive it as well. So I totally understand anyone who would be interested in this film, but man, it just made no sense. And I know that's the point. I know it's supposed to be this kind of, it's supposed to be random. It's supposed to be like a dream. And, and that's the only thing I can give it credit for is that it did feel like a dream, the way that the, the scenes would jump to different things and different things would start happening. And, you know, there are these dead horses on the piano. That was just too distasteful for me. I didn't like seeing a horse with its head cut open and stuff. That was not cool to me. Um, you know, and just doing randomness for the sake of randomness to me is not... Um, is not art when it comes to a film like this. And that's just my opinion. I'm not saying that as a blanket statement, that's my opinion. Now you look at someone like Salvador Dali who did those paintings. Um, and I find those interesting, I really do. I find more worth in stuff like that than I do when you transpose that random abstract style into the world of film. Uh, and it's not just because, oh, it doesn't have a narrative structure. It's just because it, for me, it didn't do anything for me. I had no reaction to it other, other than that this is one of the weirdest films I've seen. That shot where the guy takes a razor and cuts a woman's eyeball open was disgusting and it made me just go, ah, that's it. That's all I've got. You know, uh, I can't analyze this film. I can't get into it. Um, you know, I don't have the mindset to do it, I don't have the, uh, dare I say, education to do that, I just don't, all that stuff that was written in the review just means nothing to me. I don't get it, I really don't. Uh, if you do, please let me know, uh, and don't take offence if, you, if, you, if you're a big lover of this film, but it just did nothing for me. Um, 
you know, for me, art, you know, every time I go to, say, the Cardiff Museum, I'll go there every couple of years and have a, have a look around. I usually always end up going into the, the painting gallery and look at all these amazing, like, 20-foot portraits and, and landscape paintings and things like that, and it transports me to another time, to another place so that's beyond, you know, uh, the reaches of our lifespan and generations, you know, hundreds of years ago, and you just kind of, you can kind of picture yourself in that spot where the painter must have been or where he was when he, he got the, the image for the for the, the painting and, and I like stuff like that but when I go to some of the more abstract art you know installments and things like that they usually have those kind of um, uh, you know surrealist kind of uh, 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 exhibitions and things like that I, I, I'll wander through and have a look but it just does nothing for me it doesn't really you know every now and again there might be something some kind of random image that, that strikes a chord but it doesn't make a full sound like it just I don't really get the whole abstract thing um, you know there's there's worth to it for sure but for me what I bring to it this film an Andalusian dog just was 15 minutes of weirdness and that was that's all I can really really give to you and uh, and it only begins here because tomorrow um, th with the next video I'll be posting uh, we're gonna be talking about a, a feature-length Bunuel film uh, also a, a kind of a collaboration with Dali so uh, <sighs> Deep breath, um, let's just um, save the rest of my ranting for that one, shall we? Um, <laughs> though I don't think it'll be much of a rant, but I just, yeah, it, it didn't, it was it was disappointing because I heard so much about it. I know people like Ryan Chatway love it and, you know, besides evoking a reaction of disgust from me, that that's all it did. So is it film must see before you die for me? No, it just isn't. Um, you know, I mean, it's easily available on YouTube, you can probably find it that way. I have it on Blu-ray. Um, which now is is not really a, a cool thing to me. <laughs> you know, I thought oh, that's cool. That's like a classic, you know, surrealist short film, and I have silent, and I have it on Blu-ray. That's really cool. Now I'm just like, eh. uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna say no. I mean, a lot of people would argue yes, just for the you need to see it, you know, and it's only 15 minutes. But I just I just find zero anything in it, you know. Again, words are failing me at this point. Sentences are failing me at this point. I find I find zero in it that that, that does anything for me. So, it is what it is. Thank you for watching. Leave your comments down below if you've seen this, and I'll see you in the next video.